All right, uh, today we are going to be working on some problem solving skills. We do this at the end of every chapter and we do it so that we can keep our problem solving skills up because this is the type of math you're gonna see every day in real life. I've told you that before, but I'm saying it again. In real life, math comes in the form of problems, real world problems, and we need to know how to solve them. So uh, we are going to get started. All right, one of the hardest things uh, that kids encounter with word problems is understanding which operation to use. So when you encounter that problem, you have to look at the clues or the information in the problem and then really understand that question. From there, you can go and solve the problem. All right, so let's review some of the ways that you can um, think about problems and some of the ways that you can solve them. So I'm going to use Amanda today and I'm going to pretend, putting on my imagination cap, turn it on. We're gonna pretend that Amanda wants to buy some birthday presents for her friends. She wants to get some roller skates and some knee pads for her friends. So she needs to figure out how many legs or feet her friends have so that she can buy the right amount of gear. She wouldn't wanna have a friend with only one skate. So let's make sure she does her math correctly. All right, so let's look over here. I've put on our board some of the strategies that we've learned for problem solving. And she could go about any one of these ways to figure out this problem. So let's take a few minutes to review these different ways, okay? One of the ways she could do this is she could look for a pattern. So yesterday I introduced you to a table. This is a great way to see what patterns there are. So in this example, I have one, two, three people, and Amanda could put in the number of legs for each person, or feet for each person, and she would come up with six. And you can see the pattern, two, four, six. Maybe she wanted to get more skates for more friends. She could continue the pattern in the table. Another strategy is drawing a picture. This is one that you guys started doing in kindergarten. Drawing a picture is very helpful sometimes. So here I drew pictures of people and I made sure that they had both of their legs. So again, you can see patterns with the numbers, two, four, six, but the picture made it easier to count. I could also just say one, two, three, four, five, six. Pictures are helpful. Another way that she could solve this problem would be to write a number sentence. If she just knows that everybody has two legs, she could just say, well, two plus two plus two equals six. Two, 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 six, okay? So she could just write a number sentence showing the operations. And then another strategy is using a number line. Um, if you have a ruler in your house, you can use a ruler as a number line, or you can just take a pencil and paper and draw a number line. And then you can skip count that way. Um, so that's another example. And then finally, the act it out model. This one is harder to do uh, when we're in the classroom because you don't have objects right around you to act it out with. But now that you're at home, you can actually use this strategy um, pretty easily. This is where you actually get objects from around your home and you try to solve the problem with the real objects. So for example, you're gonna have a problem where you need to sort items into a container. You could get a container and you could get counters and you could drop them in if you wanted to for this strategy. You kind of have a neat opportunity here that we don't normally have at school. So that's something to think about. Okay, so whatever strategy you use, any one of these, um, is great. It doesn't matter to me what you decide to use. Use whatever you're comfortable with. And remember that not every strategy works for every problem. You might find that one of these works better than another. You just have to see what, you're, uh, what the problem is asking for. Um, another thing, remember that with the problem solving, sometimes they're a little bit hard. Don't get frustrated. Take your time. Try one strategy, then try another. And keep in mind that some problems have more than one step. So for example, um, number four on your work today is going to have more than one step. Don't think you can just do it in your mind like that. I mean, some of you might be able to, but no, regardless, you have to show me your work today. So um, 
that's it for today. Feel free to rewatch this if you want to review the different strategies. Um, they're also listed on your work that you see. Um, but have a go at it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.